Uh, this is Sasha from Women's Fight News, joined by Eddie Hearn. Eddie, could you give the reaction to Shannon Courtney missing weight? Yeah, it was really disappointing. I mean, she'll make her own statement um, in, a, in, well, probably now. She's not going to make weight. Uh, she's trained really hard. Um, and now she's got to get over the fact that she's lost her world championship belt. Let's go. Emotionally, that's hard to deal with. And go out and fight tomorrow night, you know. She needs to win this fight tomorrow night. Otherwise, you know, the problems just accumulate. And for Jamie Mitchell, she's looking at it now. She believed she would win this fight before. Now, she really believes she can win this fight. And she can still become world champion. And Shannon's got a tough job tomorrow night. Realistically, does she look to move up in weight in future? You know, she's always... Phantom weight was always, a, you know, a plan, but a struggle. But she's made it really well, you know, for the Ebony Bridges fight. Uh, for the Rachel Ball fight before that as well with lighter. Um, and I think her best performances are at a lighter weight. But I'll let her explain it later and you can, you can make your opinion on it. And, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, who is to blame for the Tasha Jonas? There's a lot of mixed comments, I think, going on. So obviously she's now not fighting. So what's going on there? Um, she agreed to fight Katie Taylor in a rematch for a lot of money. Six figures plus, comfortably. Um, or fight for a world title here. She wanted to fight for an eight-rounder here for very good money. Uh, we gave her six opponents. Mixed between, I think, uh, Victoria Bustos, who's kind of been beaten against everybody with you know, world championship credibility. Uh, Farias, who I think lost four of her last six. Kaiser, another girl who's never beaten anyone and lost to someone that's not even world level. Um, they turned all of those opponents down. They come back with another opponent on Monday. The MTK come back and said, what about this girl? We said, it's a terrible fight, but okay. And then they couldn't deliver that fight. Then they came back to me on Wednesday or Thursday with this girl who was one and ten, or two and ten. And I said, no, I'm sorry. I mean, this is a classic Joe Gallagher, where he's like, he just refuses all opponents. He comes back to you with, like, two, no. You know, you're on a lot of money for this fight. I get sick if the fights are terrible. You've turned down all these fights. And, you know, I can't just, you know, that doesn't really work with anyone. So disappointing, and disappointing in Joe's comments as well, because, you know, he said, yeah, they haven't been provided with opponents. They had six options of opponents that every world-class fighter had beaten with ease. You know, so, and Natasha Jones is a great fighter. So, disappointing. Rhiannon Dixon, she got unlucky rather than, you know, poor trainer management. Um, she had an opponent that pulled out on Tuesday night. Right now, Mexico, Argentina, all these South American countries are on the red list. You can't get fighters in. And we all know that a lot of fighters are from that territory in the women's game. Myself, Steve Wood, uh, Christian, our matchmaker, look non-stop for Rihanna, and she'll be rescheduled shortly. Robbie Davis Jr. now jumps in for Natasha Jonas. Does this affect Natasha Jonas's rematch with Katie Taylor? She, she agreed that deal. She, herself, MTK, all agreed that deal in writing. And then she decided she didn't want to do it. So that's a separate dispute. Um, and I, you know, I know she's got some work coming up with Sky for commentary and stuff like that, which I think is where she wants to go. But... Listen, I like Natasha Jonas, and sometimes a fighter doesn't actually know what, what goes on and what the conversations are said. From our side, we agree with her team, uh, full deal, to fight Kate Taylor in December for a lot of money in the rematch, or fight for the World Championship here. She decided not to do that and to take other avenues, do an eight-rounder, but she's not having an eight-rounder against a one or two and ten opponent for that kind of money. Last question. Katie Taylor and Amanda Serrano, will we see that next year? We need to see that next year. I mean, this boxing game you know, never fails to surprise you where I'm now negotiating with Jake Paul for an Amanda Serrano fight. So I don't know whether that's good or bad yet. I'll let you know. But we're looking at April in New York, and fingers crossed we get that made. Eddie, thank you so much for your time. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel ready for new content dropping all the time. Also, give Women's Fight News a follow on Twitter and on Instagram.